A Bible from cover to cover declares the truth that we're celebrating, that God has come to earth, not to spy out our sins, but to deliver us from our sins. And so we say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. What a joyous occasion this is. I've been in this 55 years, and uh, it gets sweeter and more wonderful, this truth. And salvation's by grace, and what a wondrous God we have who would do what he's done for us. In John 1.1, 1, 1, it says this, In the beginning was the Word. In the, in the beginning. Do you know when the beginning was? I'm not talking about the beginning of creation. I'm talking about the beginning. What an awesome God he is. In the beginning. Self-existent. Eternal. Sovereign. Omnipotent. Awesome. God we have. And here's what it says in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning. And it says everything that was created was created by Him. Isn't that something? Created by Him. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And then it says in the 14th verse, and the word, you know, the word that was in the beginning, the word that created everything became flesh. That great spirit became flesh and tabernacled among us, lived among us. You know, <clears throat> If you can get that truth, you will be a theologian. Because that's what the Bible is all about. The Old Testament begins with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis, right? And then, God created Adam and Eve. God said, let us make man, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit created Adam, and then saw that it was not good for Adam to dwell alone and created a female, Mother Eve. And then they messed up. They, they sinned against God and were separated from God. There was a separation, no longer that sweet fellowship. And guess who took the initiative? You remember... Father, Father Adam and Mother Eve, they went and sewed themselves fig leaf aprons. <laughs> Not good enough for God. They sinned against God and their fig leaf aprons could not clean them up. And here's what God said. God said, I'm going to send one who's going to crush Satan's head. And he's going to have his heel bruised. So right from the very beginning, God said this. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. And then all through the Old Testament, that message was repeated in types and shadows. In the Passover lamb, in the book of Exodus. Kill a lamb, put the blood on the two sides of the door, little. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. What's that say? Somebody's coming. A perfect lamb, a spotless lamb, who's going to be for the remission of your sins. God said, Somebody's coming. And then all through the Old Testament, the types and shadows repeated that. And then one day, John the Baptist is standing around with his boys, and Jesus passes by. And here's what John the Baptist said. Behold, there he is, the perfect Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And tonight, we're celebrating this glorious truth. We, we don't get as excited as we should. 
But we ought to be excited about that. What a wonder that this God has come to earth for the likes of us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Made flesh. Can you imagine that? That eternal creating God became flesh. And then lived a spotless life. Went up on Calvary and died in your roomstead and place. And because of that, your debt is paid. Isn't that an awesome thing? In your heart. Just you, by yourself, wherever you are. Do a praise God. As you contemplate, he came for you. He died for you. He loves you. What a truth is that. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder that he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Love me so much that he came to earth to rescue me. And his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins.